Okay, so you're about to watch a behind the scenes look at a real life wedding uh, with my couple Becky and Dean who are super lovely, really, really easy to work with and their wedding was very cute as well. It was the middle of winter, so it was Christmas decorations everywhere. Uh, we started off uh, bridal prep, which was in the family home, and then we had a church and a local village hall for the reception. As with most winter weddings, kind of the main player as a photographer is the low light levels. However, there are a few things that crop up throughout the day. So this is kind of my moment to moment, how I navigate all of that. And I hope you find it useful. Okay, good. Are we uh -huh. recording? Yes, I'm um, playing. <laughs> okay. So I just arrived at Bridal Prep. Uh, I know the couple pretty well. We've done an engagement shoot together. Uh, she's actually a photographer and he's a videographer as well. So um, I have no fears that everything is going to run to time in Bridal Prep. But yeah, let's go in and say hello. Okay, so I'm going to do a little voiceover sort of describing what's going on in each frame apart from when I'm actually talking straight to camera. Uh, so here I am uh, where the bride, this, the bride Becky, she's getting ready and uh, we're just sort of having a nice general chit chat uh, before I head upstairs and kind of start properly shooting. All right, so one of the first things I do when I arrive at bridal prep is um, say hello to everyone, obviously, and then I'll ask, it's that it's Kind of a little bit awkward to begin with so you want to uh pretty much have something to do straight away and that is like i normally ask for dress shoes perfume jewelry that kind of thing and then just have a little look around the house um and just sort of see where the best light is like how i can shoot those details so well i'm really lucky today we've got like a big four poster bed um so i actually ended up shooting this like really long um along the corridor which i'll put a picture here and um yeah it's a beautiful room beautiful vintage dress can't really go wrong with it uh, and then i also use the shoes and then we've got a fascinator i kind of place those in a few different places um around the house just to kind of get that variation in photos um but yeah i find that if i've got those things done pretty much after i've said hello straight away um then i kind of i know that i've got those stuff in the bank and you don't want to be trying to take photos like last minute of the dress when she needs to get in it i just think get that stuff done first and it also just kind of eases them in and then you can kind of slowly drift down the stairs and start shooting people and they're already aware that you're here so there's no dramas like no one feels nervous whereas if you were to just walk in and just lift your camera up and start shooting them probably make them feel quite nervous so yeah that's my method anyway so here's my sort of main dress shot but then obviously I'll take a few details I'm not going to put loads of photos in this video, but just sort of roughly to describe what I'm talking about. Uh, this is Dan, the videographer, who is a good friend anyway. Um, but when he arrived, it's nice to have like a really good chat with him just to make sure that we're on the same page. I know that working with Dan would be great. Uh, I just wanted to, if it wasn't Dan, then just kind of make sure we're sort of potentially shooting in the same style. But if there are any differences we sort of set those expectations at the beginning. I think it's super useful to understand exactly what the other suppliers are looking for from the day. Uh, it's not just my day, sadly. <laughs> and here we have some lovely moments when dad has walked in and grandma's walked in as well. They're all dressed, the bride's not dressed, but she gets emotional. She's a very teary bride, so it's nice to capture that. We're back in the bridal prep room again and I'm kind of setting up for when the bride comes in, uh, making sure we've kind of got a nice little space that's cleared so we can get some clean portraits. Then again, uh, having a chat with Dan and just sort of seeing how this is going to work. I'm constantly thinking about everyone else that's around me on the day. Oh yeah, I'll take a photo, forgot, yeah. But yeah, it's going to be like super quick, just done. But there's a nice chair in there, uh, which I've cleared the space for. Cool. And, um, yeah. Might go and grab the bouquet, actually. Uh, so, Bright has just gone to get in her dress. And uh, I normally kind of linger on the landing thereabouts, just behind the door, say, give me a shout. And when it's kind of pulled up, it's nice to get a few shots of, like, being zipped or buttons or whatever. But I don't want to be sort of too intrusive, because... Sometimes it can be a bit intense at this point, so just take a step back. Bridesmaid in the green dress with the blonde hair. Which <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it looks 
so beautiful on you. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, well done. Not that it was just because. Oh, yes. Hold off doing oh, that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for, for what you want. You're the expert. You know where the lights work in best. Um, so if it means kind of adjusting where the bride's going to be getting ready, if you need to remove some bridesmaids from the situation. Um, I am probably quite hands-on at this point. Once you've seen a couple of brides get ready and you kind of, you photograph their accessories, you know the order that would make sense for you to photograph in as well. Um, so yeah, it, all of it's kind of gearing up towards those beautiful portraits and I'm kind of moving her now sort of closer towards the light as well. Um, just whatever you're doing whatever scenario that you're working in you're always thinking where's my best light source and generally in sort of family homes there's a nice window somewhere and yeah although the the area doesn't look particularly clean I knew that the shot that I was going to get was going to be clean and then there was this beautiful chair that uh a stunning portrait painting just above her and I just thought there was just some kind of I don't know, nice dynamic going on there uh, that all the colours and tones seem to work beautifully. So what I'll do is I'll kind of get the shot that I had in mind, which was her sat down, and then always get in closer and get a few tighter details as well. Um, at this point, you know, there's still conversation going and you're working with that too. And you also want to, like, absolutely get some shots with the bouquet, um, just as a banker, really. So now we're inviting uh, dad and grandma. We, I've already prepped them. They're on the landing. So just when, they're, when we're ready for them to come in, that's all I'm taking charge of. And I've got myself in position. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful moment. I'm not going to talk too much about this. This is what documentary photography is about. And sometimes you just sit back and let it happen. <laughs> here at the church. Uh, so I don't really leave anything to chance with bridal prep. Um, there's no way I'm leaving bridal prep any later than it would be for me to arrive half an hour before the ceremony. Because I like to go and chat with the vicar, um, just kind of get a feel for the layout of the church. Like, can I sneak down the sides? Can I go, like, where, where am I gonna stand, basically? Uh, if we're allowed to throw confetti, where I could potentially do group shots. There's quite a lot to figure out when you get to church. Um, so anyway, we're here, and it's a pretty cute little church. Uh, today's wedding is, I think, it's about 40 people or so, so it's not going to be crazy busy in there. And also a good chance to like uh, catch up with the groomsmen as well and just get a few portraits of them if you haven't managed to do that in prep already. So, we okay. <laughs> All right, so chat with Vicar, um, really lovely lady, uh, but it did throw me a little bit because she told me that there were, we weren't allowed to take any photos during this, the service whatsoever. Uh, I haven't had this for a couple of years, so it was just a case of like, I know that the couple are probably expecting those photos and then it's my job to be totally charming and explain to her that I'm very unobtrusive I'll hang out at the back, I've got a silent shutter, you won't hear any of that. Anyway, it eventually transpired that she allowed me to shoot at the front with Dan the videographer as well, so I managed to capture it all as I would. Uh, we also discussed where we were allowed to throw confetti and then also there was um, sort of a candlestick that I needed to move uh, just to make everyone's life easier. I wasn't afraid to ask for that. I've also just shown you a couple of photos from groom prep, uh, which we didn't get the behind the scenes from. But again, like arriving early is a good time to do that. And then bride arrives looking super excited. I get those couple of banker photos. Um, if they've got transport, you definitely want to be getting some photos as much as you can with that. Uh, and now we've got the bride's entrance. Well, the bridesmaids obviously <laughs> come in first. So it's American style bridesmaids first, British style the bride comes first. Uh, their theme tune was to the song from Love Actually. It was so lovely. And um, yeah, very emotional walk down the aisle for the bride. And 
I, as you can see, I kind of shifted over to one side, which isn't my typical spot. Normally I shoot onto the bride, which if you're looking at the church, that means that you're on the top right. So I do end up shifting over again, but obviously being very careful not to be <laughs> too noisy given uh, the restrictions that I was sort of already under. So now you see that I've changed over. And throughout the ceremony, it's all pretty documentary. I'm very aware that I'm kind of, I don't want to be overshooting just in case she can hear my shutter. Uh, so I was just about being very sensitive and very self-aware to the environment. Like, you know, she's probably had a couple of experiences with other photographers at some point who were a bit overbearing. She doesn't know that's me. So I'm just very sensitive to that. And now we've had our first kiss. It was a super cute moment. Oh, there's only about 40 people or so for the ceremony, so super easy to manage. I look pretty happy, ceremony shot. And then we're going to go to the signing of the register. I'm not even sure what I was standing on then. So, ceremony's finished. Uh, I always make sure after the signing of the register that I'm at the back, uh, because you're never sure if they're going to sing another song or there's going to be another reading, but you want to be able to get that shot of them walking down the aisle. So at this point, I'm getting everybody out in a walkway and I actually steal the couple away because if you kind of leave the couple there amongst the crowd, you lose them. And really, I think, I don't know if this is me being over the top, but it was a super cold day. So you want to make this point as streamlined as possible. So I'm getting everyone out into a confetti walkway. Uh, whilst I managed to sneak a quick photo of the couple as well. So that's just more to, to add to it. I think people don't mind being told what to do. Because um, also when you've got confetti, you're not really sure when to throw it. And then sometimes you just get some people doing it prematurely and it gets a bit, oh, is this a photo? Is that the photo? I don't know. So I definitely take control at this point. Also be wary you've got someone like with mobility issues and that kind of thing. So... I'd sort of already preempted when I arrived early this shot, so I knew what I was doing, even though I knew it was going to be super tight for the couple walking down here. So potentially I was only going to get like one or two shots where the walkway opened, uh, where the couple was stood next to each other rather than sort of one leading the other. Um, and, uh, you know, that's all I needed. I also preempt the couple and say, like, you know, take it nice and steady because I'm walking backwards. I also tell the guests um, at this point, like, I'll tell them my name, just sort of say if anyone wants any photos at any point, give me a shout. Like, I introduce myself so that they don't feel like there's any kind of barrier. And also it just it asserts your kind of, I don't know, your position at least on the day. You're there as a photographer and, you know, people I think if you're more outspoken, people are kind of less scared to come over and interrupt you and or go, oh, you know, I'm not sure if that's what I should be asking the photographer to do, etc. Anyway, straight after confetti, I get the big group photo. Um, we've got the wedding car in the way. I'm fine with the wedding car being a little bit in the way, as long as it wasn't just some random car. And actually that car on the right, I did end up asking her to move back for the group photos. Um, just because it was just, it was all such a tight space. Um, it's a really small church and we kind of like, perhaps not the ideal place to do group photos, but it was the best option that I have. Um, I like to do group photos straight out of the ceremony pretty much if I can because you've got everybody there at the same point often when there's a change in venues people sort of disappear off to like you know petrol stations or go and check in at hotels and all that kind of thing and you just lose them so I had about like 15 to get through so I knew I had to be a little bit militant so I do the calling and just everyone decide step out and then just roll call everyone in so this is some cool uh, transport that they got to take the guests from the church to the venue, which was only two minutes down the road. But it just looked beautiful with her dress. So I thought, why not grab just a few couple shots there as well? Um, it reminded me of there's like a photo. Um, I think it's American and I think it was actually staged. And it's... Um, this guy going away to the war, black and white photo and he's leaning out of a train carriage window and she's kissing him and I just thought maybe that 
it was a bit of a nostalgic photo. I also managed to get like a couple of, a few couples portraits at the church. Like I generally make um, a point of doing that just because you don't know what you're going into at the reception yet. And, you know, it was quite a cute little walkway. So if I've got that in the bag, then, you know, that's nice. And again, like of the, of the transport is pretty important. So these are just kind of banker shots. They're not going to win any awards. <laughs> um, you never actually get any time. <laughs> this is my phone. So here we are at the couple shoot uh, location. As it was a church and then a village hall reception, there weren't all that many options for shots of the two of them. So fortunately, Becky and Dean had uh, already preempted this and knew that there was some kind of like little monument uh, not too far away from the church. So we all drove there, and again, it was like absolutely freezing, but my sort of preempting for couple shoots is it's lots of walking lots of talking and I'll kind of run through a couple of little poses but not I don't want them to feel like poses at all but still people need a little bit of direction uh for things to feel natural as well uh there's lots of kind of hand holding just get close and then I'll kind of suggest a few conversation starters like you know talking about what you have for breakfast, like what other people are wearing, all that kind of stuff, which gets them to focus on the two of them. Again, the, the light's a little bit low because of the time of year. So that's ideal for couples photos at this point. So I'm thinking about where the sun is going down. There's a couple of shots sort of where the sun comes through the trees. And then I'm using basically a mixture of my 50 mil and my 135 mainly, uh, the 135 is beautiful for couples portraits. It's just, it's very painterly, sorry, Canon L series 135, because uh, I shoot Canon R6, so the mirrorless. Uh, it just, it gives that kind of dreamy aesthetic. And then just a few sort of nice shots walking along the road as well. Uh, there wasn't a huge amount there, so it's just about trying to get as much variation as, as you can. Uh, I sort of give a bit of instruction about like, twirling a dress and uh, <laughs> it probably looks a bit like a book cover then walking off into the sunset but it so happens that those two are really into books and anything kind of literary so I know that they absolutely love that shot having that dress with her ankles out it was just shouting out for a sort of twirling dress shot so that's what we did we spent about 15 minutes or so there and then on to the reception venue so I have to get there before the couple do. Uh, and if that means instructing the driver to just kind of take them the long route or whatever, because I want to be set up and, and ready for their entrance and just kind of get a little bit of a feel for the place when I arrive. Uh, it's quite sort of cosy and that works well because there's not, it's sort of, it's not a huge party that's 40 people or so. So you can kind of adapt and work with the amount of people that you have. Um, in terms of the light in that place, it was all very yellow, uh, which is absolutely fine. And obviously, a lot of it is rem remedied in, uh, <laughs> yes, okay, cannabis. Uh, I, well, I obviously did have one, uh, and I think that's absolutely fine at this point. So whilst I'm sort of shooting the tables and decorations and stuff, um, because I said at the church, like, if anyone wants to grab me at any point, uh, this is a really good coverall. Um, if you, you know, like, I think one wedding once I had a couple kind of come back and was like, oh, shame that we didn't get that. So if I say outside of the church or after the ceremony, like, anybody wants a photo that's basically not on my list that I've already got from the couple, feel free to grab me at any point. And that means that I've kind of suggested that there's uh, some responsibility on the guests if, if there's a photo that they want to get. Um, so yeah, shooting the table decorations, obviously everyone was already in there, so that was um, it's tricky to get sort of empty room shot if you like, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> you work with what you've got on the day. 
And yeah, here are a few of those details. I tend to go like sort of start wide and then go go in tighter. Um, often couples have put a lot of thought into all of these little bits that they put on the table. So I definitely will be getting some detailed shots too. And always look out for the table plan. But at the moment we're in a really good place because we've got room shots done, um, we've got couples portraits done. And uh, so from my perspective, it's sort of a like those two big things are the, um, if you've got those in the bag and you've still got time to sort of get a few handed stuff at this point in the day, like we've got I think probably half an hour before they start speeches and then they're going to do like a cake cut. Oh no, even more, like 45 minutes before they do speeches and a cake cut. Uh, so now this time I can just feel by like actually getting the lovely handed stuff because I've kind of got the, the boxes ticked on the other things which is really cool. Fortunately, I had a very willing DJ at this point uh, who really wanted to help out with getting people involved in the cake cutting. Um, so he suggested doing a countdown, which I gave a thumbs up for. Uh, however, I would have done a countdown if he hadn't got involved. Uh, I normally start from five. He started from ten. <laughs> it went on forever. Um, so now we're on to speeches. Um, in terms of how I photograph a speech, I tend to kind of shoot wide. And then get a little bit tighter so we can get some emotions going. Uh, these guys had four speeches, I think. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of heartfelt emotions. I'm, I'm photographing the person doing the speech and then I'm also photographing a few other people around the room as well. Uh, just to hopefully get a few reactions. Uh, I don't tend to stay in one place. I move around. And then also I'll move things off the table. Um if they're kind of blocking my line of view of like a good shot with with the bride when she's listening so there was like um the, I'm just trying to think yes there was um a big christmas tree there in front of the bride which then ended up on the floor and then I put it back after the speeches are finished but nobody minds you kind of messing with that sort of thing for a, for a little bit uh so yeah the speeches All right, so it is feeding time, and I obviously look very happy about that. Uh, so I'm sat with Dan, the videographer, and then his assistant as well. Um, it's nice to kind of separate yourself a little bit. So we're fed, watered, coffeed. I'm uh, just going to go and grab my light from the car, which will uh, set me up for the first dance, and then. There's always like a quiet match. 
um, there's always a quiet patch after people have eaten. Depending on when they do the speeches, these guys did their speeches before. Um, carry on, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, and yeah, so they, they because they did the speeches before, they're like now on coffees and cake and that kind of thing. So how do I fill that time? First thing first, go and get my light, and then I'll show you how I feel that time. It throws the light. Uh, so it's um, really warm and it kind of um, feels a little bit almost like golden hour on the dance floor. Uh, here I am doing a little bit more floating around as well. Um, I didn't say actually earlier, when I sit down for food, normally you've got like an hour and a half or so thereabouts. And actually I use that time very productively. So I will back up everything that I've got so far to external hard drives. My camera obviously shoots uh, to two memory cards. But if I'm by myself, having that time to back up and then I'm actually able to cull like the wedding up to that point uh, using photo mechanics program that I use. Um, and then also highlight a few previews. So when you're kind of in the throes of wedding season and you're shooting back to back, and if you do do like a next day preview, that leaves you in a really good spot. So it's probably, uh, I don't know how many people do this, but I found it hugely effective. My workflow it was amazing. Right, so we're on the dance floor. Uh, again, I tend to start shooting wider and then getting tighter for those lovely little interactions between the two of them. Sometimes the light can be a bit dodged, so I tend to stick a couple in black and white. And then we've got dance floor stuff. Uh, again, I go in with some flash. Um, there's so much that I could go into with how to shoot a dance floor. And so if that's an area that you'd like to have a bit more info on, that's something we could definitely discuss separately to now. So wedding is shot. Uh, dance floor was pretty good, actually. Like I was a little bit nervous about the amount of people, but everyone was like properly in the Christmas spirit. So I'm quite confident that I've got a really nice story for the day. I had a little look at um, portraits, confetti shots, uh, a little bit from bridal prep on my break and I feel like I'm in a good place. So um, yeah, gonna hit the road, go home and see my dog because it's been quite a long day. Although the winter weddings are slightly shorter than the summer ones. Um, maybe it's my age, but I'm still feeling it a little bit. Uh, so I'm ready for a cup of tea, bed, and a hot water bottle. Anyway, see you later. So there we have it, the wedding is shot, and the couple have since had their highlight slideshow and they've had their full gallery as well. Uh, they were really happy with the photos, so as long as they're happy, then I'm generally happy too. I uh, hope you found it a useful learning slash experience building tool for your own weddings. If you would like to go through anything in a bit more detail, um, I'm offering one-to-one -one Zoom sessions. So just click the details below and we can get something booked in. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching.